friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop bringing you part two of the West Virginia Mandolin Build. I'm just putting this little front end on the video to explain a few situations. First of all, I'm getting pretty far along on the mandolin and the videos aren't caught up to that level. And so I'm going to try, make a big attempt to catch up on this mandolin build in the next two videos. So I'm going to cram a lot in this video and just little short segments. I just want you to know that. And I'll do the same thing in the next uh, video too. I'll try to cover all the topics and if there's anything important that I can think of, tips or tricks or whatever, I'll be sure to point those out. I also wanted to just mention in the front of this video that I keep getting lots of inquiries on the guitar on what's the status of the guitar, why is it taking so long, and you know, where's the next video? Well, I think I mentioned that at the end of the last video. I'm sure a lot of people don't watch them all the way to the end. Problem is that, you know, I have to wait for it to dry. Uh, I put the last coats of lacquer on it uh, September 11th, as a matter of fact. So I was going to give it a full 20 days to dry, so the end of the month here, end of September, it will be dry enough for me to proceed, I think. The first three or four days, it looked perfect. I thought, okay, I think we've got enough finish on there. It's going to be perfect. But I have to tell you, you know, all those days since then, it just keeps drying a little bit more and a little bit more, and you can see the grain coming back into the, into the finish. I think it's going to be enough that I'll be able to buff it out at the end of the month and uh, call it good. But I don't know. We may get to the end of the month and I may have to uh, punt and uh, put more finish on it. I don't know. That doggone lacquer is a pain in the neck. So just be patient on the guitar build. It will come to the end here before too long. And uh, as I mentioned in my just most recent video, we do have a commission to build a mandolin for a fellow in England, and we're going to be hitting on that before too long, too. But right now, we're working on the West Virginia mandolin. I believe this mandolin belongs to Larry out there in West Virginia. So, Larry, I hope uh, you know, you're not getting too anxious here waiting on the next vid. I, uh, we're going to cram a lot into these next two videos, I hope. Thanks for watching, guys. was a roamer, a legend on sea, tell the good boys love, made a new man out of me, life had no man. down pretty far. Um, ironically, the best way to carve it is to go crosswise of the grain instead of going with the grain because those curls catch the thing. So that's just a tip to you when you're trying to carve this stuff. You pretty much got to go across the grain. And this thing here definitely saves your fingers on that.
what I'm experiencing with this plane and the tooth blade is that the fibers are getting caught up in the teeth, uh, in the slots here, and they're and they're very hard to get out of there and it makes it'll run up in there and dig into that and stick in there and then it's very hard to push it. I've not really experienced that with these teeth on the standard blade. You can see the blades are made different. They've got a hole in this one here for the bigger plane. But um, the only thing I can tell that looks different about this one and like I said I've never really experienced the the fibers getting caught in the teeth like this one is, is that this one appears to have an, a, a bevel on the top side between the teeth. That's what it looks like. Um, I don't know if, if I can file that bevel in with this little, I have a real tiny jeweler's tri-cornered file and I'm thinking about just trying to bevel the top side of all the teeth like this and see if that will do anything because uh, it's really hard to push this thing with the teeth on it and it should be easier. So I'm going to just try that a little bit here and see what I can make happen. I was having a real problem finding a way to hold that so I could file on it. So I just screwed a screw down through it there and um, then I'm putting it up against this bench dog here. Vice dog I guess you'd call it. And now I think I can, yeah, that makes it pretty solid and I can run the jeweler file down through there and try to cut off the top of these grooves. It's hard material as you might guess so it's not filing the easiest, it's kind of sliding on it more than it's filing it. And I kind of expected that but it does feel like it's doing something. It appears to put a little burr on the end of it, so I'm going to knock that burr off with this uh, stone here. And I've already hollow ground the end of this, so it's very sharp. The sharpness is not the issue. It's the way it's catching all the fibers and grabbing them inside the grooves is the problem. I'd say there's a definite improvement. Um, I don't see the fibers getting caught in the top nearly as much as it was. Um, it's, it's pushing a little easier now. I think, I think I may have fixed it. I, I wouldn't say it's great, but boy, it's hard to cut this hard maple anyway. This is, those curls, man, they just are... The more curly the wood is, the harder it is to carve. So. But it's going to be a beautiful mandolin when we get her carved. Well, after struggling with that thing for quite a while, I actually think I cut it off faster with the little with the little plane by quite a bit, actually. It it just pushes easier, and it just I I guess I'm just used to it. I don't know, but man, I can cut the wood off in a heartbeat with this. And I'm not getting it done with that other thing. This just peels it off. You know, you just, you just see here all these peels that it peels off there in no time at all. And I'm pretty sure I got that one just as sharp as I got this one. It might have something to do with the angle of the blade. I don't know if the angle... Oh yeah, that's probably what it's got to do with. This angle of this blade is a much steeper angle straight down. Um, I don't know if that'll show up here. If I can hold it, that's what i am really got the problem with. But the angle of the little plane lays down a lot lower. You know, it's 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 coming in at a lower angle. The uh, This one's coming in at a steeper angle. I think that makes the difference right there because this one really just this is almost effortless to me although it's it's hard on your fingers though I mean it's right on the ends of your fingers it's very hard on your fingers but uh, you know what it's so much faster that I I think I'm gonna have to put up with the finger thing because I can carve it very quickly with this 
it will take but a few more minutes and I'll have this thing down to where it ought to be with this. When I say a few more minutes, I mean maybe an hour. And that's if my fingers hold out. I went ahead uh, after seeing the difference how that cut with the smooth blade, that's just the regular smooth blade, how much better it cut. I thought, well, I'll just sharpen that smooth blade back up a little bit more on this and try it again uh, to save my fingers. And yeah, I still think this one's a hair better, but this one does pretty good with the, with the smooth blade. For whatever reason, that tooth blade on this doesn't work to suit me. So I'm pretty good with this. I think I can do just fine with this, and this doesn't hurt my fingers at all. And this doesn't hurt my palm either. Somebody asked about that. You can't even hardly feel it in your palm. At least I can't. Well, it took me about 15 or 20 more minutes, and I've got it knocked down pretty good. Uh, you can always do better, you know. And But I'm just saying, in general, it's, it's pretty rough. It's roughed out pretty well. Now we've got to get in some of this detail up here, and that's, you know, it's thick and it's heavy and, and a lot of hard carving there. So I switch over to a chisel, and I just tap this out like so, like, like that. Generally, I put plastic in here so I don't hit that. Now I just need to get me something to stop this. Now, now, uh, I was just doing that for the camera, so I'll set up differently here to really hog this out.
would say I'm close to uh, 90 percent of the outside carving done now getting close you know one of the main goals of this and this may make sense to some of you and some of you may not make any sense at all I guess and that is that as I'm carving this I'm picturing where those F holes are and my goal is to point these this back at those F holes in a way and bounce that sound like I I put a fairly long slope on this to bring that sound forward and you know I, I want it to bounce out of those holes so I don't know that's my theory that's how I think of it as I'm carving it I try to you know in other words I wouldn't want to bring these sides off and drop them down they're, that's going to bring this the sound across ways I want to have them sloped so that they're pointing up and they're pointing at those F holes like and you know and and driving the sound back out of the instrument so anyway it's all about the it's all about the sound you know I want it to look real good as I carve it also but I'm trying to keep in mind what the carving is going to do to the sound one of the questions that I got recently was you know, he didn't understand why it got a deeper tone as you carve away more wood. Well, I guess I don't have a good analogy for that, but th my best explanation I've got is that when the wood is real thick and real stiff, it's going to be a high pitch. And when it's real stiff, it can't vibrate very well, and it's very high pitch. And as you thin it down and thin it down and thin it down, it gets it, it starts to flex and vibrate more, and that pitch lowers greatly. That's the only way I can explain it. I'm sure some of you could explain it much better in the comments. But uh, anyway, that's it definitely lowers the pitch when you thin the wood down. So if you're looking for a lower note, you need to thin out certain key points as you're carving your instrument. I don't worry too much about the note until I start carving the inside. The outside is, is functional and looks, but the inside is what helps make the note and the, and the volume and all that kind of thing. But it's starting to it's starting to feel real good now. It's it's got a nice curve to it, nice you know long curve here, and then I I from about here down I have it sloped down a little bit too. Um, I don't want it to be abrupt anywhere. And then again, as I mentioned before, I start looking at it like this to see if it looks symmetrical. And you know I don't know if you can see that too well, but. You know, so I try to get it to start looking symmetrical, and and then it just also will show you where there might be some extra bulk that you can get rid of. like that till I get satisfied then we'll scrape her all down real smooth after I've carved that much on an instrument and I have carved quite a bit on this although it's only taken me a couple hours actually I started on it at 223 specifically today and what time is it now it's 358 so you know I really haven't spent that much time on it it's not quite four o'clock so that's pretty good for that amount of time, especially on a hard back like this. This stuff is hard, man. So, what I like to do though, after I've carved that much and done that much work on it, is let it sit for a while. I've got some place to go this evening, and I think what I'll do is uh, just knock it off now and then check it tomorrow and see if I like the way it feels, maybe tweak it a little more. 
and then smooth it out before I start on the inside. You know, I just want to make sure the outside just as good as I can get it before I start on the inside because the inside is where the critical measurements are and you don't want to have to be tweaking the outside a whole lot, although you will always tweak it a little bit, seems like. But you don't want to have to be tweaking it a lot on the outside after you start the inside. Especially when you get down to those critical measurements. That really does feel good. I feel little high spots in different little places and you know as I rub my hands around your hands really feel feeling it are really one of your best indicators if you're there or not. Um, you know, I, I've mentioned to, pe to a few people that I think I could almost do this without seeing at all. Um, certainly am very thankful I do have my vision, but I think that if I did were to lose it, I think I still probably could carve it fairly well and do a fairly good job. Um, obvious things that you wouldn't know is whether there are some scratches there that you can't feel but, but can see, things like that. But otherwise, I think I could potentially do it. Well, I guess that's it. I think I'll take a break for the evening. That I bear for my Savior Will at last one day when he calls me lay down And all my sorrow will then be forgotten When I trade cross for a crown and I will trade the old cross for a crown when the burdens of life I lay down when those pearly gates for me shall swing open I will I've got this back scraped in where it's pretty darn smooth. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's pretty darn good. Um, I really feel like I'm very, very, very close to the final shape. Maybe a little bumpy in a place or two, but not too bad, you know. You all, as you feel it like that, you'll always feel something, you know. And uh, just a little minor area right there. So I think I'm just about done. Uh, so we'll give you a weight on this to give you some idea. Now this is this is curly red maple, which and let's just see where we're at on this. Zero it out just to make sure. And it's 10.5 ounces. Now that keep in mind the inside is totally flat. There's been no carving on the inside, so it's 10.5 ounces. And now we will go to grams, and it's 298 grams. That'll give you some idea, you know, when you're carving one, uh, you don't want it to be a whole lot heavier than that, otherwise you're going to have a very heavy instrument. side of this carved oh I would say two-thirds of the way there by now it's uh, still got quite a bit to go but it's probably two-thirds of the way there it's lightened up a lot it's starting to have a tone but not much yet if 
But I will tell you this, this is where that new shop improvement comes in handy. Can you see all of this? And uh, you know, it's just far too much for just your little dust buster type deal. And it's too big of a hassle to bring in the big shop vac. And I don't have room to keep the shop vac in here. I will tell you that I did put the router speed controller on my new hoist for my vacuum. And I just, you know, it still makes a noise, but it moves much slower and it moves just about the right speed. So here it comes. Perfect, you know. And then I decided to use this after all because I need the way to block this off. But I just tied it to my lift here. And so now there's no danger of this falling off and hitting an instrument or anything or hitting me in the head. I can... Uh, push the button and, and take the rest of my hoist back up. Get that out of my way while I'm using my vacuum. And now I can also vacuum my floor and the whole bit. So it's really awesome. Friends, there you'll find the three of them. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, half past nine. You can set a watch by the it now it's still thick I know that for sure I haven't measured it in every location yet but we'll just to see where we come you know it was several days ago when I weighed it and I don't know if I remember off the top of my head what it weighed but I think it was around 284 grams something like that it's on ounces first so we'll do ounces first 6.7 ounces now and let's go to grams and now it's 188 grams. So we've lost, I'm going to say we've lost close to 100 grams. So we've got a lot more to go. And we'll let you know where it ends up. I have holes drilled in it where I want to measure, make my measurements and that just saves me time having, rather than having to measure every time and, and figure out where I want to check my measurements. So I just put a dot there and then I you know, go through now and I'll measure all those dots, the thickness, and then everything is blended to those dots. As always, I'm moving over to the tooth blade because I'm getting close now. I'm going to work on this center area here. The tooth blade just doesn't take a very deep cut and it just scratches it off, kind of. It also helps level all the other cut marks. probably 12 to 15 thousandths of where I want to be right here. So I'm going to stop there because the scraper will take care of the rest of that. And then I'm going to put some pencil marks on here and measure all these other areas. I'm going to weigh it again. We're not at the deep, you know, complete finish, but we're getting very close. 
Um, I don't expect to, to have lost much weight because we've been doing the detail cutting and carving on this last section here. So let's just see where it is. And we're on ounces. And it's on six ounces even. And on grams, we're at 170 grams. So we lost another 18 grams. So, you know, we're doing pretty good. I think we're still a little bit heavy, but not too bad. You know, I'm going to go back over it. I'm going to call it for today. I've been working on it for a couple of hours. And I'm going to call it for today as far as working on it any further. And I'll come back tomorrow and with fresh hands, if you kind of understand what I mean there. And feel it all over tomorrow and feel for any you know, any abnormalities, and uh, I'll check it with the uh, thickness calipers again all over, and just make sure we're getting down to that final, final detail. It's making a sound, but the back never does make a lot of sound compared to the top, but it's not bad. It's got a pretty good sound, and it does have a sustain. You can feel it vibrate about that long. About like that. So it, it does have a sustain. It still needs a little bit of carving, but we're getting very close. I thought I'd let you hear what it sounds like over the better microphone. It's a little hard to tell, but it does have a nice uh, ring to it, a nice sustain, uh, better than some tops on some cheap mandolins that I've taken apart. It's actually pretty difficult to cut this tight of curve out with a, I think that's a half inch blade that's in there. It might be a 3 8 um, Let's see, I would call it a 3 8 That's a 3 8 blade, but it's still pretty hard to cut that type of a, a tight curve with that. But I like to widen this a little bit anyway so you have clearance for your strap. So I think I'm fine there. The, uh, so that part's cut out. This, this will be the bottom uh, point on the back side. This will be the point on the front side or up towards the neck. And then this is the tail block. So we got all the parts cut out. Now we'll take them to our little spindle sander and clean them up. That cleans them up at least temporarily till we fit them to the mold and the sides and see how they work there and then we may have to touch them up some more. Well the camera shut off on me so I don't know where it shut off but I just marked this particular block. It was it fits real good on the curvy side but on the inside it's about a sixteenth of an inch too big so I'm going to take it down. I'll probably just take it down on uh, the sander but uh, we'll see. Yeah, I cut this one down and it fits really good. I'm real happy with the fit there. This one here is a little bit, I got a little bit too much curve in here, so I'm going to have to take a little bit off this outer end, and the outer end is sticking out too far anyway, so that's going to be perfect. 
So I got to take off some off of this end and this end in here. That looks really pretty perfect to me. So now I'm going to expand these clamps back out and tighten that up a little bit because the neck clamp up there is held in differently. It's not held in by this. So I'm just taking my time here trying to get it as even as I can possibly get it as I do this. Now we'll see how well we can make this block fit. And it's looking good. The side itself is a little long, I think. Though that's not terrible. So I think I'll try to guesstimate how long I need to cut it off. I think it would be right about there. And I'll have to loosen this top edge to get this piece out. And then I'll cut this piece off square. Well, it's that time for the glue up now. We got it all fitting really nice. So we'll kind of start it where we started before and get her all fitted up. got this last block and I've got a little bit more fitting to do right here and then we'll glue her in. Okay we're going to glue this piece in and then maybe just put a few wedges around just to tighten up everything and we're I think we're good to go. Yes I'm jealous, jealous. I think I'm moving in my mind I think about you I begin to doubt you I'm jealous all of the time Jealousy goes through the wind Looks pretty good. We're going to turn it over and see if it's fitting up good on the other side. And it's not in places for sure. No. Stay out of my foolish heart If this is love, I don't need you Tearing my dream world apart You know, you always want better, but I think it's pretty good, really. I think we can live with that. So we'll just go with that and give that overnight to set up real well. Mm -hmm. 